Welcome back to The Ether, the show that disrupts the way you think about running your business. Join me, Brandon, and my co-host, Sean Delaney, the creator of What If, on today's episode. Our goal is to provide context around what we talk about so you have the clarity to cut through the noise and the confidence to grow and run a truly harmonious business. Let's jump in and take the next step to achieving business freedom. Yo, yo, you know what I just realized? So I'm listening to the intro, which yeah. you've told me to do, to listen to the things that are playing. <laughs> Can you I imagine? Know. Can you? I know. It's <laughs> wild. It's wild to do that. So, so disruptive. We, we love to provide context to people, but sometimes we get so off track that we we just don't. So <laughs> I, oh. that's, why, that's why I love this show, though, because we could just have a good time, have a good conversation. We're just talking about how many billionaires we've talked to in our lifetime, and now we're here. You know what? Sometimes mm-hmm. context isn't needed. It's good for a little cliffhanger. We were talking about that. Yes, sometimes it's funnier with no context. We know that. <laughs> Out of context, it's hilarious sometimes. Business-wise, context, very, very important. We work to we work very hard to provide you that context. But everything else, I don't know. I can't guarantee that. Not on this show, at least. No. But hey, we're talking no. about games. Speaking yes. of having fun, we're talking about gamification. So how about this? Why don't you lay the foundation here why we're talking about games i'll say this you were on a podcast that was wildly disruptive a few weeks ago we are going to talk about that a little bit and link to that episode down below in the show notes but what what kind of got your your gears turning on games and gamification on that show yeah uh it was a great conversation we will mention the show um i loved it would love to go back we were talking about so they had questions he had questions the interviewer um and uh and yeah so we were talking about what we do it just naturally flows from what we do he said what is it you do we help businesses go further faster funner well how do you inject the fun and that follow-up question right there is enough to start me thinking well do we really inject fun because in my mind there's there's two kinds of games if we're talking about gamification for business well i guess there's two kinds of games under this okay there's the games for fun doesn't change anything we're just playing it to play it we're playing battleship no actual wars are being fought no lives are being lost we're just playing battleship for the fun of battleship and then there's games like when we're talking about business gamification where we're playing it to change the outcome of something so it's a game with with an intentional purpose at the end. Something will be different in the world because someone won or lost. Okay. So there's stakes to it in some way, shape, or form. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about business gamification. We're playing a game, but there's an objective. There's stakes at the end. And we have to remember that because the only kinds, if there are winners or lose, and losers in the game and there are stakes at all, outside of hey we're just gonna have fun even the smallest amount then the games must be fair because all feelings of the the, it is the feeling of the game wasn't fair is what makes any loss intolerable and we can't get over it to the degree that the stakes meant something to us does that make sense so it'll always feel like i can't get over it there are Man, the trivia night at my kid's school, we should have, there were three answers that they should have given us. And we didn't fight it because like, ah, we're all friends here. Whatever. But I've had to hear that we came in second in some circles for like three years. It's like enough about it. And the reason I can't let it go is because there was like one of the ones, there are pictures of bales of hay. How many hay bales are here? People counted up the little squares. And most people said, oh, there's whatever, 16. And I went up and I I said, there's not that many. This little cartoon picture, that's bailing rope around the hay bales. Those aren't separate bales. That's one bale there. There's one bale. And I pointed to it. And he goes, oh, yeah, you're right. I go, great. So we got the point. Well, we moved on. (laughs) What do you mean? done. And you, and you need to take the points from that. And he's like, are you really going to sit here and argue with me until you get the point? And it's like, now you're, now you're crapping on the fact that I'm saying, Hey, you know, and my team sent me up here to say something. And now 
Now what do I do? Now am I going to go back to the table and have my table go, you couldn't work this out? Aren't you a lawyer? Or weren't you at some point? Like, what? you couldn't argue this case? Oh, my God. Look at the position I'm in. Can't let it go. It wasn't fair. Stakes, wafer thin. Now we're in a business setting and we're trying to solve some intractable problem or we're trying to get something done and it, it's not fair then. So an example was uh, in 2002, he asked me about failures in gamifying things. And I was, in, it was 2002, I was working at MetLife. My team was asked to host a strategic planning event and they had, they said, also make it fun and make it this. They had all this stuff that we had to check the boxes for. Great. So as part of this, we did a family feud style thing to reveal all the answers that people had voted for on things that should be the strategic planning or strategic initiatives for the year. So a lot of emotions in the room. A lot of people want to see their projects up there. And they want to get funding for things. They want to get to get the accolades for running the star project, all these things happening in the room. And I have someone very junior helping me with this. And she's got the screen. And now I'm going through survey says, and two senior VPs hit the button and one says this, and she has to look. And now they're saying it, not necessarily in the way that we've aggregated the answers to what the answer is going to be up on the screen. And she's got to, parse that out is is that what he's saying mean this thing how unfair to her and i'm going oh god as it's happening i'm going this is this is going to be a disaster and it was a disaster because once we got through the round and this team got got the got the win got all the points and we're revealing the ones that no one got at the end and then ding the one that he said comes up just not in his words and he's like i said that we should have had the category. And it's like, okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And it's like, no, I am going to worry about it. Now there's half the room's got crossed arms and people aren't having fun. So the lesson there was, okay, there were stakes, even, even small ones. And the importance of having fun in this particular game was to spark creativity. Where does that come from? It comes from having people return to a childlike state so now i've literally done all kinds of things i put them in groups at tables near the decades where they were born because there was a lot of age differentiation in the room i want to point out how many people from different and we had candy that was most popular in in across the decades and they're like oh remember these and it was fun. oh it's fun i'm getting kids to think like children and now I've told them, now we're going to play a game. And they go, oh, yeah. And there's stakes involved. Someone's going to get a toy and someone isn't. Oh, my God. Now I'm all into it. And then the game isn't fair. And then and then I tell them, guys, let go. Let's, we're all adults here. Bullshit, Sean. You just told us to act like children. Think like children. Be like children. Get in a childlike state. And whack. You told me if I played this game with these rules, I'd win, and I didn't win, and it's not fair, and I don't want to play anymore. And that's exactly what happened in the meeting. Not those words, but that's the attitude that then showed up. Because I hadn't done this very many times. It was 2002. That's a big lesson for me to learn. Okay, remember, there's fun, and then there's fun with a purpose. And as soon as there's a purpose or an outcome that we're trying to achieve, there are stakes. As soon as there are stakes, you need to be hyper aware, making sure that the game, even though we're all adults, feels fun and fair more than anything else. Because what's fun for me is not always what's fun for you, but fairness is like a universe, it's like music. We, you may not be able to describe it, but everybody can feel it and understand it when they see it. Okay. So that's where we were disrupting there kind of on the nuances of the thinking around it and and to make sure that because brandon we were talking before about you, know, you and it's your story to tell about the injecting of fun into things in the wrong environment and how it can be like gas on a fire instead of what you think it's going to be yeah so let's let's explore that real quick first and foremost shout out to rob alvarez the professor game podcast again sean's episode linked down below. We'll make sure that's there um, on the recording of this, not the live stream. But anyway, 
Great so, yeah, show, by the way. Rob has got a great show. He's show. great Rob, at interviewing. Love it. Yeah, let's talk about this because as as podcast hosts, we have multiple podcasts. Rob is a top 1.5% podcaster. He's got over 330 episodes. Rob, you're on fire. Keep killing it, my brother. Love your show. But yeah, seriously, if you want to explore gamification way deeper, go listen to all his episodes, all 330 of them. Um, you'll get a lot out of him. He's had amazing people in the space on the show, including, of course, Sean. Anywho, oh, well. I digress. Uh-huh. Um, but no, so so this, yeah, th- this opposite side of gamification that I've seen go terribly wrong, both in a competition environment on sports teams and also we're in the business context here. You mentioned something important where um, you, you bring up childlike or acting like a child, right? We're first introduced to games as a kid. I have three little kids. You have three little kids. And we're just starting to get into games with them. The game of life is their favorite. It takes forever because they are not at the minimum age threshold yet. But they love the idea of just moving the little car and, and playing their game. But they're, takes they're a lifetime. Oh, you're not talking about the game of life. You're talking no, about the game, no, the, the <laughs> game of life. Yeah. Ooh, but they're so excited more. by it because they love the activities and they're they're in that childlike mindset where they just have fun doing the thing. For them, there is absolutely no purpose. So when we put the purpose piece on it and the objective of winning, that's often where the business world intersects. Obviously, the sports and, and all this other stuff too, but in business. There's an objective to win, and there's an element of competition. If not set up properly, it can be a total disaster. Think about a a car dealership as a good example that comes to mind. You have two car salesmen competing against each other to sell the most cars. Who loses? The customer, always. Because all they care about is the number at the end of the day to sell the most amount of cars. doesn't matter who they sell them to, if it's a good fit or not. That would be a terrible example. Another one, a real life example that I had, I was on a call the other day where this woman was so desperate to inject fun into her business because her culture sucked. Her employees hated her, couldn't stand their job. Um, nothing against her. It was just she made the job monotonous and, and no fun to come to work. So she's like, I need to inject competition and fun into what they're doing. And the way that she was going about it was much like the car salesman example where these people were competing against each other <laughs> to the detriment of the customers. So not only is she going to kill the morale further, she's going to kill her whole business because the competition was going to eat itself alive from the inside of the business out. I see it all the time, but that's where that's what we're talking about here with disrupting the space of gamification and making sure it's both fair and your intentions are good behind the purpose of the game. Oh yeah, there's three th- uh, yeah, there's three things there that all wanted to come out of my mouth at the same exact time so they got stuck. <laughs> One is I've seen large uh sales teams where they're like hey we're all a team here we're all working on the marketing together and we're all we're all a team you should work together share information about your clients yeah oh and by the way we do a big sales competition at the end of the year and we ring a bell for everybody who signs up right this this and this and makes these sales so it's a competition does it affect anything oh yeah it actually affects your bonus at the end of the year too yeah, okay, good luck with that teamwork. Around the year. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna sandbag all my clients for the entire year. How come you haven't uh how come where aren't those renewals in yet? Oh yeah, they're coming because I'm saving them all for the 15th when we have the big competition. You you knucklehead anyway, not missing the point of what the game is supposed to be and the and the attitude and the and the ethos that you're trying to put together. Second thing is now imagine listen to what you just said. Kids, they're having fun in the game. Just because they're rolling the dice doesn't even, they don't even know because for them, they've constructed a purpose and they're fulfilling that purpose in the way they're playing the game. Now, the older siblings go, Well, it's no fun playing with him because he just check, takes the chess pieces and just runs them all around and the horse gets to ride over everybody because that's how he plays it. So he's not playing by our rules. So it's not fun to play with him. That's, but those kids are saying it because we've taught them the importance of an outcome the importance of monopoly is to what they think might be get a rainbow of money in front of me because i want to have one of each no and it's I'm like, boardwalk and park place everybody <laughs> knows that. Right? and so we tell them that those are important and so think about that when we're raising our children are they having fun in life right up until the point we've told them the last piece of something that they should think is important. 
that this is the outcome of the game. This is the outcome of your life. These are the parameters that you should be playing by. And I'm going to shoot all over you until you look and act like what I think you should look and act like. Because I'm playing chess, but he's playing horsey runs everyone over. And <laughs> that sounds like a more fun game. <laughs> horsey just wins everything. That's how I play rock, paper, scissors with the kids. Like <laughs> rock, rock beats everything. They're like, no, it doesn't. Paper covers rock. I'm like, bullshit. I don't say that to my kids, but I, I'll go, no, bullshit. Right. The rock punches right through the paper, smashes those scissors. And, and then they're like, okay, so rock, tie. I'm like, my fist is way bigger than yours. This rock <laughs> crushes that rock. <laughs> that okay, so rock you're no fun to play games with. <laughs> That's not how we play it. I think I did that once, but a good story nonetheless. So I'm Irish. The good stories become the truth and then everything else. Goes out the way. I want to pause real quick. Um, we have a, a comment on our live stream from Yassine. He says, is there a book on this? So no, but I will echo the same thing that we just said. Rob <laughs> Alvarez, professor game podcast. Well, there might be several books on this. Not none, none that we wrote. There could be hundreds. The- We've, yeah. We didn't even read any. We just, this is the thinking up of thoughts. This is from from life and, and doing business and consulting with our clients. So yeah, first piece of advice you've seen is thank you for the question. Love that you're watching, uh, watching live. For those of you listening, go listen to Rob Alvarez, the Professor Game podcast. We'll link to it down below. And also, if you're interested, you can reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you uh, spice up your culture, if you will, and build a more harmonious business. That's what we're all about. So those are our two resources for you. You know where to find us. Uh, but Sean. Back to you. What were you saying about children and their little horses running over chess? Pieces? Well, so that's right. So that's just a, a thing to to think about, right? When you're when we're talking to children, but we're talking about gamification in business. So how do we use? And, and I don't even know that it's fun, because as we said before, what's fun for one player is not fun for the other. So in a business game, if we're thinking too much about, I want them to have fun. I want them to have fun. We can go too far into the Fun is the only purpose of the thing, and then we're getting nothing out of it. And if you say, well, there's fun stuff that's just for the sake of fun for people bonding, no, because you can have fun and bond with no one. You can have fun on your own in a game and piss everyone off and and, and do damage, or you can have fun with that purpose, uh, but, well, I guess where I'm going with this is, let me give you an example. So I had a game where in strategic planning, this is a big fortune 100 company. And I made up the game that we called the yellow brick road. And it was a game. How you played it was everybody in the room had to get through to the other side of this game map that I had created. And each of the per- people were, were reflective of, one of the attributes we wanted to get out of the project. So what's the new state we're looking for? And so it was, well, we need to change these three things. So those three people were representing those three attributes. So we had to get them all to the other side. And the things that were preventing us were things like flying monkeys, which were all the different distractions and attacks on this project. Well, we're never going to get senior leadership to buy in. Okay. That's a, that's a flaming monkey, a flying, a flying monkey, right? And that's a, and then we're never going to get this. That's a flying monkey. And we had to navigate. There were other perils and pitfalls. We've got, if you want to learn more about this, hit us up. We'll tell you more about it. But it was great because we had, we had the rules. People knew what they had to do to play. I got them to have fun. We used lots of fun references around the thing. But the point wasn't the fun. The point was to get them into the place, the proper place, to get them over their objection, over their objections, over their real world, it's never going to work because it got them past all the things that was trying to get them past in a real change management kind of situation. It was memorable. They then could they then felt each other's pain. They had to get other people across the line because it was a real team dynamic. And it worked so beautifully that I was asked to do it in other places in the company for them because we remembered that there was a point to the end of the game. And that was, what's the new state going to look like? Who are the stakeholders? What is the, what are the processes? All right. Oh, I'm starting to sound boring. Just going through what you would normally do in that thing, but it was fun the whole way. So, so understand what is the point of the fun we're about to have? 
What is the point of the game? Oh my God, a joke almost came out that would be so inappropriate. But anyway, what is the point of the game we're about to play? <laughs> welcome to the ether. Well, welcome to the ether. And uh, are we making a baby here? Or are we just having fun? Right. That was the that was the real analogy there, right? So, what is the point of the game? And that, and what are the rules? And then what are we getting at the end? We'll reset the stakes. And then the childlike innocence can come and play and help find new ways through it. There's other tools and techniques that are out there. You don't need us to tell you what they are. We will do another show about it if people really want to hear it. Things like the six thinking hats and stuff like that. You sprinkle in other things that are kind of interesting, disruptive, but all with a purpose to getting people into the right state, to make the right kinds of decisions, and to move forward as a team. That's the point, I think of gamification not hey let me tell everybody they're a team and then sup set them up so they're competing for each other uh, with each other on a game that they know is also tied to their bonus you want to talk about putting stakes in a game and and gas on a fire where the team might not be gelling already terrible and so one person could look at that example and go gamification doesn't work it's terrible i've seen it blow things up and i've all and that or, or gamification's fantastic and it's the answer to everything depends on the situation and just like any tool that you have at your disposal in your business you're going to know when it makes sense because you're not going to paint a room with a hammer and get very far you could try let us know how it goes but <laughs> help me understand this so if we boil this down to the essence of yeah what we're trying to do with games and gamification specifically in business that's that's the only context i'm, I'm applying this statement to and we had talked about this the other day we mentioned this earlier you want to get people in that childlike state, in that childlike mindset to, to free them, to not be so bound by those real world scenarios of strategic planning and project management and then the boring things, right? And, the po and what's possible. Right. And what and, is and, possible. These yeah. are the limitations of what's possible. What if it isn't? What if and, it isn't? And kids think that way. But that's the beautiful part. So when we get people in that correct state, the childlike state. Also, what we had talked about the other day was when you can explain something to a child, to a six-year-old, you can explain your problem that clearly to where they understand it. They most often have the best solutions because you've, you've simplified and you've gotten down to the core of what that problem is. You're not just having fun and playing a game. I mean, you're actually accelerating your problem solving capabilities. I'm curious for you. So yes, I want to hear your thoughts on that statement, but also yellow brick road, I mean, ha, ha, did that? Did you see that take place when you were able to simplify things down to a game and and take people back to their childhood and talk about the Wizard of Oz? Oh, it was insane! The solutions that we come up come up with and how easy they were by the time they were at the end of the game, and they just and it's always the one you know it's the woman who didn't say much, and she's coloring because they had coloring pages with Wizard of Oz themes on them and stuff. Whatever, and she's just coloring, just thinking, she's just activating different parts of her brain. She's kind of nodding along as if she's listening to music when there wasn't any music there. And then all of a sudden, you know, she's the one like, what if we just took that part out and we moved that over here? And then we had this department do that because they're already doing it for that. And it just laid the whole thing out. We're like, okay, what are the monkeys coming at? Well, we'll never get this and this. Ah, it doesn't sound, that's, yeah, that sounds like a, that sounds like a flying monkey. Let's put thing thing over there, right? That doesn't even sound real. Or we had different like mythological things too. That's like, that's not even real. Flying monkeys are things that can really attack you. That sounds made up. That sounds like the wizard standing in the way. The wizard's not real, right? And so we had different categories of things. And it was so fun though, to ask those questions. And instead of being like, Alice, that sounds like you've got another act. You're still grinding that ax about HR. Nobody's coming at anything with that energy. It was kind of like, well, is that the wizard talking? Or is that is that a real monkey? Is that the witch, the real bag that nobody wants to talk about because we're all afraid of it? Which is it? And it just lowers the stakes enough and gets people into that creative space. And, it, and the brilliance that comes from people then is phenomenal. And then watch how mad they get when they come out of that state and they go into the real world and they want to talk to colleagues and they still are filled with this kind of innocence. And they're like, oh, we did it. We solved it. You're not going to believe it. Oh, yeah. You know, man, was, I've just been doing it, sitting here doing TPS reports all morning. But what were you guys doing in there? I heard a lot of laughing. <laughs> oh, we did this and this. It's amazing. There are flying monkeys. And we, and we solved it. We're going to do this. That'll never work. And then watch how their spirits get crushed. And you know, and then you know, 
that's your culture, senior leader. This spirit crushing one. And you had some people in a little in a little chamber of fun, a little fun bubble in there. And they lit up and they came up with something brilliant for you. How about create more of that and less of the other? Just saying. But applied in the right way, it's a it's a fantastic tool. Over applied with no purpose. It's like this is a clown show in here. Oh, we have a lot of fun as you're packing up your boxes because you close the doors. <laughs> you went out of business. Works, like you can, you know. I love it. All right. Most important question of the episode. What is your favorite board game? Ooh, favorite board game? Uh, I do like, I do like Monopoly. I do like, I do like Battleship with my son. Um, I don't know. I think those two, you're going to say one. I'm going to go off. Oh, I should have picked that. When I was a kid, it was Mousetrap just because you had all the pieces and that was a fun parts. game. And then, and then you'd lose one piece and the whole thing wouldn't work. I don't know. Is that why I think operationally now on how everything needs to connect? Could be. Or it doesn't work. Could be. Maybe. What's yours, Brandon? It's hands down Monopoly. Monopoly. Why? What is fun about that for you? I don't know. I've always, uh, I've always enjoyed the game, the the strategy of it, the the plotting out. Ooh, if somebody is there strategy, here, there is. Well, strategy. yeah. If someone's here, they're very likely to land on this red space next. And if I have a hotel, it's going to ruin their day, and I'm going to steal all their money. I sound like a terrible person when I describe it, but mm. there, it is a lot of fun to. Amazing what you learn about people when they talk about <laughs> you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's another. We could do a whole episode on that. What you learn about people's character and how they play games, maybe. Just maybe we'll do that next week. How about this? We're going to talk about authenticity next week. Yes. Maybe we'll come back in two weeks and talk about how, what you what you can you can learn from someone's character from playing games. This is a this is an important topic. I, I think it gets overlooked in business about how useful it is in all of the areas, but I think it's just done the wrong way most of the time. That's why we're stuck on how to do it. And it's yes, and not only what games you like, but how you play them. Ooh, maybe because hiring you, hiring with games. When you revert people back to the state of innocence and you see how they muck about in the world, you know some assumptions they make, whether it is a benevolent world or a or a hostile world. It's the first lens that we're going to sort people into. They play very differently. You can know that immediately when you're like, okay, we're all going to play a game. And you watch how people position jockey or take it light, more lighthearted. You can get a lot about the essence of who people are by how they do the stuff because it's in those moments they don't really think you're watching. Absolutely. Okay. So next week is authenticity. Oh. Two weeks from now, two episodes from now, culture, gamification, and hiring with games. We'll see where that goes. Do that. See you on the next episode of The Ether. If any of this was interesting and you like you seen, want to learn more about how we can help you build your business, build a more harmonious business, Reach out down below. All the links are in the show notes. We'll see you on the next episode.